and let's move to this week's content. Okay, so um, this week's content, and just so that, let me uh, get the web page to you guys. Um, the link is in the chat uh, window on the right-hand side. Okay, um, this week's content is on flipping education, the flipped classroom. Go ahead and share my screen. Okay, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna take a a, a little dive into um, the idea of flipping class, of flipped education. Um, really give it a, a good definition and look at some of the ways that it's being used and then uh, dive into some uh, web content, like content that's already out there, and we'll finish off by uh, exploring how we can create our own content and then use that content in a, um, in a, uh, a way that allows us to kind of assess that students are getting what we're using. Okay, so we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time, a uh, little bit of video, um, some infographics, um, looking at some information, and then you know just really uh, exploring a creation of content for the class. Just so I can get a sense, how many of you have um, have heard anything about uh, flipped education or flipping school or flipping class? No, have it. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna so the, the, I'm gonna start with a uh, uh, with a kind of a real basic, and um, on on my uh, on the this week's page, uh, this first infographic is it, it sets it off pretty um, pretty succinctly. Um, this graphic, basic, the, the basic idea behind flipping classes in a, in a traditional, um, the, the kind of traditional setting for class is that, uh, you know, teachers would impart whatever content they needed to impart during the class period. Then the, as you know, the students would sit, they would take notes, they would, uh, you know, do whatever they do whatever the classroom practices were to understand that content and then a uh, teacher sends students home with a sheet of homework or something that they have to do to show that they understand what was uh, what was discussed in class and uh, then you know ultimately they take a test on it and you know that's that's traditionally how school is uh, has been uh, has been done uh, a few years ago uh, a couple guys in the middle of the United States uh, they kind of developed this idea of flipping class and what they would do is they would create videos of their lessons and then have their students watch those videos at home and when the, the kids came to class the next day they would practice they would do the homework basically in class so they would they would do all of the application stuff the application of the knowledge that they attained in the videos when they went home, they would then come into class and they would, you know, whether it's, you know, doing problems in class or whether it's doing some sort of project in class or working on some sort of, you know, some essay or, you know, whatever it is, it would, you know, really wound up looking the way that it looked depending on the class. But it kind of released the teacher from the, from the responsibility of imparting that information during class and gave the teacher time to work with kids on the application of that information during the class period. Okay, so as you can see in the graphic that, you know, the blue section is the out of class section. So this is, you know, in the library or at home or, you know, wherever, wherever a student might, might partake in this stuff, that the student prepares to participate in class activities by watching whatever, you know, tutorial is set before them. Then in class, during class, the students practice applying the key concepts with feedback so the teacher can work alongside the kids to apply whatever it is 
they learned uh, by watching the video. And then um, outside of class, students can, you know, work to uh, further their understanding of the material by working on projects or, or any kind of extension activities. Uh, this video is a cute little video that basically introduces the idea of the flip class. This is one, it's short, so we can watch it together. This is a classroom. The teacher stands at the front and the students watch and listen. You'll recognize this because it's probably how you were taught and how your parents were taught before you. But there are a lot of problems with this approach to teaching. You see, not all students learn at the same speed. So some get left behind. And while some students learn better by listening, others may learn better by doing. This means that teachers can't always do the best job they can. But there is another way. The flipped classroom addresses these problems and makes learning more personal. First, the teacher makes a video that delivers the content they'd usually teach in class. Then they share it online with students who can watch it before the next lesson. This leaves the teacher free to spend class time leading activities that help students apply the knowledge. Students can rewind and rewatch a video as many times as they like and come back to class with questions for the teacher. So keeping up with the class is no longer an issue. Students can access the video at any time using mobile devices, giving them the ability to learn more independently. Instead of sitting and listening, students can spend class time applying knowledge in more practical ways. And teachers are free to spend their time working with students and giving them individual support and attention. The flipped classroom model is already making a difference to students and teachers worldwide. So get involved. Discover more at flippedinstitute.org and become part of the movement. Okay, so this is a classroom. So using a you know cute little penguins and a walrus, we get a, a nice little explanation of um, of what it means to flip. So I'm sorry, Jacqueline, I have to meet you. I'm I'm getting all of some feedback. Okay. Get us back here. So you know that 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 wraps it up very nicely. That you know. The, the idea of using video to teach students concepts on their time and then bringing those concepts back to class and working through them on, you know, kind of meaningful projects and meaningful exercises is the, is the main, the hallmark of the flipped classroom. Um, I, I know I've mentioned this a couple times as we've gone through content in the class that you know, there are certain things that, that um, I present as, you know, kind of uh, trends in education. And um, sometimes those trends become really stalwart methods that are used, you know, all over the place. And the flipped classroom is one of them. Um, that it started out as something that was kind of on the fringe and something that teachers would kind of dabble with. And now it's become methodology for a lot of teachers all over the place. So uh, the flipped classroom is something that is um, not, just, not just a fad, um, not just something that uh, a few teachers are doing, but it's, it's becoming part of what we do as teachers. And so uh, the main th uh, thrust of tonight is to really give you the opportunity to explore the way that um, some teachers fl are flipping the way that uh, some teachers are using it, and to understand that, um, you know, there are some teachers that, you know, are very strict with what they define as being, you know, flipped class, and then there are some teachers that are using it in all kinds of different ways, um, really leveraging uh, digital video in order to maximize student achievement, and so that's that's where. Um, our, our, our focus is going to lie. We're going to you know, be doing some, some different uh, practices with the idea of flipped classroom and video in the classroom. So um, this is a, a nice infographic that basically lays out 
Um, the why the flipped classroom has become uh, more of a of of a mainstream methodology in the classroom than a, than a fringe idea that just a few teachers are are using. Let's let the graphic load here, and then I'll I'll blow it up, and we'll we'll share some of these statistics, some of these uh, numbers. That blows up a little too much. Okay, so um, this is a this is a an infographic that is basically um sharing numbers um from teachers that have flipped their classroom. Um, it's you know kind of laying out the idea of you know how does how does this methodology how does this impact teachers and how does it impact students. And you know these these numbers are what really drive you know we're very data driven. Um, if you haven't heard the term big data, you know it's out there, right? That data means everything these days, and the collection of data is important. It drives a lot of school reform and school uh, you know what 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 we're doing in schools. Okay, so when your um, superintendents and your administrators and your principals uh, come down with uh, new edicts and uh, and new uh, new ways of doing things in the classroom. All those new ways of doing things always come from data. Okay, so as we look at some of the data here, the impact on teachers. We look at this little capsule here and has to do with job with job satisfaction. Okay, that you know before these are from teachers who flip okay so we have this is preliminary data as of 62112 with responses from 453 flipped educators so these are 453 individual teachers who have taken on uh, the, the 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 flipped method of teaching so before they um they flipped we had a 40 out of those 453 teachers we had a 46% uh, were satisfied with their job, and um, after we have 88%. Okay, so we can see the impact on teachers as far as how happy they are with their job, right? That we we see you know almost a, almost a double, a doubling of you know job satisfaction, and um, it as far as online um, instruction is goes we have now 43 percent have put 50 percent or more of their instruction online and 28 percent have more than 75 percent of their instruction online and this doesn't mean that they're online teachers this doesn't mean that their students are sitting at home and they are you know facilitating instruction online the way that we're doing now this just means that they're that that their direct instruction of core content has been ported into an online environment. Okay, so you know you're looking at a lot of teachers who are putting a lot of their instruction online. And the majority of those teachers putting it right onto YouTube. Okay, and we see here that there's 99% of these of these 453 teachers are going to use it again next year. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, we have, uh, as far as impact on students, 67% of those 453, 453 educators report test score improvement on their standardized test scores. And that 80% of them uh, report that their students' attitudes are improving. Okay, so these, these, are, these are numbers we can look at as well. That, you know, we satisfy the, the, the admins with the increase in standardized test scores and we satisfy ourselves as teachers with you know a huge uptick in attitude improvements for students okay which is which is a big deal I mean I teach teenagers every day and you know just as a, a personal aside this past Tuesday was 
absolutely one of my worst days teaching ever. And it wasn't because of any particular uh, thing that happened. Any, you know, it wasn't like, you know, some student cussed at me or, you know, I got in a, an argument with a colleague or, you know, it was, it was just, I, I have been, you know, teaching pretty much for uh, like 15 months now with without like a an extended break and um you know i've worked all of summer school uh where you know i just been i've been going and going and going and for some reason on tuesday of this week the the kind of uh self the the, the self-centeredness the apathy um of of a lot of students that are in my classes really just kind of hit me between the eyes. I don't know why it, it hit me on Tuesday, but it just did. And, you know, I, I just felt like this super frustration with the attitudes of my students. And if you don't, it, you know, if you don't, if you teach teenagers or work with teenagers, um, you know, their, their attitudes, you know, it, they, they dictate, you know, a lot of how you, you feel as a teacher. Uh, sometimes, you know, so with that up with that, you know, improving attitudes and students, it's a big deal, you know, when your students are have have a good attitude toward learning and being in your class, and, you know, it, it makes you feel like you're doing something right. And, you know, it, it, it really bolsters you to keep pushing. And when, you know, kids are constantly complaining about stuff, and, you know, really just kind of focused on themselves and not, you know, not wanting to uh, be learners or, you know, there, it, it, it sends you in the other direction. So, uh, teachers reported benefits for all students in particular AP and special needs students. So kind of across the board, the high achievers, the, the students with, um, with special needs, right? We're looking at, uh, this really improving outcomes for kids across the board. I like this quote, flipping my classroom has dramatically improved the number and quality of interactions with individual students. Individual being the key word there. You know, the idea behind the behind flipping class is you're not you're not standing in the front of the classroom imparting information to the class as a whole. Right, that's being done at home, on through video. You are now free during class time to meet with individual students to see how you know they're working with the individual elements of instruction that that have been placed before them and you know so the number and the quality of interactions with individual students is is improved right and that's that's hot man that's that's as a teacher that's the that's really the sweet spot okay so when we look at this this who's flipping feature, right? 85% of these teachers that they surveyed had seven plus years of teaching and 91% of them have been doing this less than two years, right? So we're talking teachers with experience, but this is, but this is a new thing for them. So it's a, you know, it's, it's a relatively new phenomenon and, you know, the teachers that are using it are the ones, are ones that are, and the ones that they talk to about these, you know, about this, this data is, you know, uh, are, are teachers that have not been doing it a long time. Um, I will say that, that as subjects go, science and math really lend themselves the best to flipping class. Um, English language arts, you know, a little more challenging because, you know, you're dealing with reading and writing. And so, you know, some of those things are, are things that, you know, are, are a little tougher to do. But science, especially math, is another great subject to flip. And as we go through some of the content um, that we can that we ourselves can find online, um, we'll uh, you know we'll we'll kind of see that a lot of them tend to gravitate towards science and math. Uh, so ninety five percent of these respondents are secondary school teachers. So you know we're talking about a you know a, a relatively uh, robust high school phenomenon. 50% uh, from suburban, 25 urban, and 25 rural. So we had a nice cross section of teachers for for this uh, for this data.
All right, so um, what I would like you to do for uh, the next 14, 15 minutes is um, instead of kind of forcing you to watch this video through, uh, through my computer over the Hangout and um, into yours, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, this, this video itself is 24 minutes long, but the last 10 minutes or so of it is um, kind of an instructional video on how to actually uh, how to actually make a green screen video using iMovie. So if you can just hit it right up until you know kind of 14, 14 and a half minutes, and I'll just I'll preview this a little for you. Um, the the guy who is uh, who's making this video is a guy that has a uh, a pretty insane insanely uh, robust YouTube channel. Uh, just to kind of share that with you real quick. His name is, uh, his name is Keith Hughes, and he's, he's, a, probably the easiest. All right, he's a history teacher. And so his, his YouTube channel is called Hip Hughes History. You know, he's kind of a, a goofy guy with a spiky hair and, a, and horn rim glasses. But he has so many uh, history videos He's completely flipped his class, and he's got, uh, you know, the last one he up uploaded was 27 minutes ago, the Speaker of the House. So, you know, religion in school, the Voting Rights Act, the Chinese Exclusion Act, the Iranian nuke deal, uh, lethal injection, uh, the Obama trade uh, plan explained, gay marriage legalized. So he's got current issues. He's got... Uh, tons of uh, historical issues, the U.S. History Regents Review, so it's a, a Regents test, um, how a bill becomes a law, death penalty, the Protestant Reformation, Irish potato famine, so, you know, just a ton of videos out there that he has created, and, you know, they're all like, you know, he's, he's kind of a goofy guy, so if you look at the Irish potato famine, he's got about a six-minute video. history how you doing we're doing the irish potato famine in the next couple of minutes guys a million dead a million leave the country it's kind of a big deal so what are we waiting for why don't we go get her done right now so ireland and great britain um you can see ireland how close in proximity it is okay so he's he's using a technology called a green screen in which he's standing in front of basically a green sheet and then after the fact, he brings these graphics in, right? So, uh, you know, he, what he's doing here, you know, it's, it's nothing that anybody couldn't learn to do in a, you know, in an afternoon. But, you know, he's, he, again, he's created a bunch of this stuff. So he's, you know, he's got some skills to, uh, to create his own videos. But, you know, just, uh, just to give you an idea of the types of things that he's, that he's putting out there. And these, this, so... He has his kid watch his kids, students, watch these videos at home, just like uh, we've been discussing. And then when they come into class yeah. the next day, they are able to uh, to use what they've watched to perform whatever and complete whatever tasks uh, he has wrapped around these topics. It's a great Britain have a relationship that go back to 1542 with King Henry the yeah. King. And that relationship is cemented down in a governing sense with a law passed in 1801 out of Parliament called the Union Act. Ireland really is, in a sense, a colony of Great Britain, but part of Great Britain. And all of the representation that they do have on a... Okay, so the lecture that he would give in class, he's doing it online. Okay, so in uh, on, on the uh, page here, yeah, if you can... If you can go ahead and, and watch the video up until um, about 14, 14 and a half, okay, right when he, right when he goes into the, uh, the section on, on a green screening, you can stop. So right now it's 5.55. Uh, let's go ahead and um, meet back together at 6.20. How's the how's the connection right now? I see. Ten minutes ago, you were having connection issues. Are they still there? Yeah. 
I keep getting a notification when my connection is bad. Okay. Is it, am I getting choppy on you or <laughs> fading in and out? No. Okay. No. So hopefully it stays. Okay. It's just, it's just yelling at you. Okay. All right. So as long yeah, as, as long as, as long as we're all uh, still here together, then, then I think we're safe. So, uh, so yeah, about five fifteen, five sixteen, we'll we'll jump back together after watching the video. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, hopefully, um, you know, you got a good sense of of some of the the basics there and setting up a flipped classroom. The idea of of uh, using flipped instruction. Uh, with kids and you know it's um if you're not uh, <laughs> engaging like Keith Hughes is uh, believe me it, it can still be done and we'll be looking at a lot of different examples um, as we move forward so scrolling down a little bit um, the next section on the web page has to do with already created video content so this is the stuff that's out there that um, that you know is growing and growing and growing every day as a um, as a resource and you know one of the great things about the um, about already created video content is that the majority of it the vast majority of it is on YouTube or Vimeo or you know a, a myriad of different places but the cool thing about it is is that all as it is in all these places um, it's free. It's free to utilize. And so I know a lot of teachers who are who are flipping class, who are actually um, utilizing video that's already been created by other people in order to um, in order to flip their class. So let's say I'm a math teacher, and um, I want to I want to start flipping class tomorrow. Um, I know of a great website out there that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of math videos. Like super tight, super clean instruction in math. Okay? It's called Khan Academy. Um if you um if you haven't been uh out uh live you know off the grid living in a uh a sweat lodge out in the desert, uh you've heard of Khan Academy. <coughs> Um, I have embedded here a a, uh, a, sh a short video, basically laying out uh, something that uh, that that Sal Khan, the guy who created Khan Academy, has uh, you know basically his philosophy and his idea about education, um, and you know kind of wondering if this is the future of education. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and as we go through here, uh, you'll see that I've got some uh, some websites outlined. Um, you can link to the website. Or if you're on your iPad, you can link to the iPad app. So some of these things have iPad apps that go with them. Some of them are websites. And so we kind of can go back and forth here. Uh, since we're on the computer here, I'll go ahead and go to the website. Let me go ahead and log in here real quick. Okay, so just a, a quick glimpse around the Khan Academy website. If you uh, go to the top here on subjects, under subjects, you'll see that that you know they've got a lot of different subjects here. Besides math, there's science and biology, physics and chemistry. There's econ economics. There's uh, arts and some history. Uh, there's computer programming. Uh, they've got test prep for um, the SAT, the MCAT, the GMAT. Um, all that stuff and um, and so they do have a lot of videos in a lot of different areas but just as a uh, just to kind of take a look at some of the framework here um, you know they've got their math basically laid out K through 8 
um, or you can go through, you know, like early math, arithmetic, pre-algebra, basic geometry, and then we get into high school where we have the we have actual courses: algebra one, geometry, algebra two, trig, and so on and so forth. And um, basically, at this point, Khan Academy has full courses. So if you need to learn algebra one, you can click on the algebra one link. And you can take a full Algebra 1 course right on Khan Academy. Okay, the way they have it set up now is you can actually come in and do some problems, right? Uh, that's, that's kind of one way to, kind of, to utilize Khan Academy is you can actually just plug kids in. You can set yourself up as their coach in Khan Academy and just plug kids in. Or you can just utilize their videos which are all on YouTube. If I go and if I want to uh, just kind of copy the video URL, I can actually just go to their YouTube channel, and they have a full YouTube channel. So this is one is on solving unit unit rates, ratios, proportions. It's a little pre-algebra class. Uh, you can see here the video itself is two minutes and thirty seconds, and you know if if this is what I want students to learn, the 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 night before we're going to do some of this work in class, right? I can just give students a Khan Academy video. Turn up the volume here a little bit. Jada takes three hours to deliver one hundred and eighty nine newspapers on her paper route. What is the rate? per hour, the rate per hour at which she delivers the newspaper. So this first sentence tells us that she delivers or she takes three hours, <coughs> three hours to deliver, to deliver 189 newspapers. So you have three hours for every 189 newspapers. Newspapers. Okay, without without watching him go That's through the, the first sentence, told. watching him go through the entire problem, right? So these are just you know quick tutorial videos, and if I Let's, actually, but we want if you're watching something on YouTube and you want to actually go to check out uh, their channel, I mean just just to just to get an idea of how prolific Khan Academy is at this point. This is one out of hundreds and hundreds of videos that they've created. Um, that uh, on, on one discrete thing, this, this solving this problem on ratios, proportions, units, and rates, and you can see that it's been viewed 446,000 times, almost half a million times. And then I can see over here that 2.2, almost 2.3 million people subscribe to the Khan Academy channel. And so in order to kind of look at all the video offerings that someone might have, you can always click on this link right here, and this will take you to the Khan Academy uh, YouTube channel. So when I click on that link, it takes me to the Khan Academy page. And just to get a little um, a little taste of what it feels like to travel around YouTube a little bit, if I go to uh, their home page, this is their channel, right? You can um, you know. Anyone can have a YouTube channel. They're free. Um, if you put a video on YouTube, you de facto already have a channel. So if you go to YouTube and you're signed into Google and you actually come up here to your little icon and click on it, you can actually go to your channel. And it's always kind of over here too, my channel, right? But now I'm on the Khan Academy channel. and um, if I scroll down when I'm on their channel page, I will get kind of a rundown of some of, of some of their stuff. So this is the biology section. Uh, these are some uploads. This is so I'm not really getting a ton of videos here. But if I come over here and I click on videos, then you start getting a sense of exactly what we're talking about. And these videos are sorted by newest added. So the Faraday's Law introduction, four hours ago it was, it was added. 
and I can sort them by most popular too, or I can sort them oldest to newest. Where it becomes more effective here is if I go to playlists. Now I can see here's finance, here's biology, here's probability, here's physics, here's statistics, okay, here's algebra. These are playlists. There's 96 videos in the algebra playlist. Okay, and on this playlist now, they're set up in order, which is cool. Okay, so they're set up in order. So if I come to the Khan Academy page and, you know, I, I kind of know what I'm looking for, you know, if it's solving inequalities, they've got a six minute and 26 second video on solving inequalities that I can use. Okay, another easy way is just to come into YouTube and type in Khan Academy. Let's say I want um, PEMDAS. Okay, the order of operations, PEMDAS. Uh, what is it again? It's parenthesis, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's the order of operations. And so he's got videos on that. Okay, if we're dealing with, and so he's actually got a lot of videos on that. Introduction to order of operations in a pre-algebra class. Uh, that's, there's a nine minute, 40 minutes. So I can, I can go through here and I can kind of start becoming a consumer, right, of, of, these resources and use the resources that I want to use to flip class, right? So if I'm if I know that I'm going to be working on order of operations tomorrow, <clears throat> now think of this, you know, as a parent, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take off my teacher hat, put on my parent hat, and say, now as a parent, if I, my kids come home and they come home with uh, with homework, <clears throat> and I as a parent have no context for this homework and um, you know and I'm gonna even pretend I'm not a teacher in in my day in my day life that I'm just you know Joe parent <laughs> no not a teacher um, you know I'm not a math teacher either so my kids bring home some math homework and I'm looking at this and I'm going eh, I don't have n any idea like I know how to multiply the way I was taught to multiply but you're doing some hashtag tic-tac-toe upside down Chinese method that that I've never seen before and I'm not really sure you know how to start you know working toward this oh this is common core stuff I don't get this right and so we you know I've gone through the ringer uh, with my kids and math homework but let's say we're working under a flip class environment where now my kid brings home this video as homework this is something that I can actually sit down with my kid and watch and talk about and have a conversation around and really work through you know because this is the teaching right so if i sit down with with my with my daughter and you know she's in you know if she, when when she was back in third grade or fourth grade or whenever it is that you learn pemdas whenever you learn the order of operations for the first time if if we were actually to sit down and watch a video where it was explained succinctly See, now that's something that I can work with with my kid, but they, I get a worksheet that's been photocopied. It's a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, so some of it's even a little fuzzy. And, oh, yeah, she forgot it, so we actually had to print it up off the teacher's website. So it's a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy that we printed up on our printer. And, um, and not only can it's, is it challenging for me to, to work through these problems that I've, you know, I have no experience with, <clears throat> And that I didn't sit through a lecture on or, or work through in class at all. Um, but, you know, here's uh, some of it's even like fuzzy and I can't even read some of it. But, you know, to be able to actually sit down and hear someone explain something alongside my, my daughter. And then we can actually work through some problems together and kind of figure it out before I send her to school the next day to actually now use this in class. Right. This this to me is a parent. I, I like this a lot better. Now that we've got the basics of order of operations out of the way, let's try to tackle a really hairy and beastly problem. So here we have all sorts of parentheses and numbers flying around, but in any of these order of operations problems, you really just have to take a deep breath. And remember, we're going to do parentheses first. Okay, so Sal Khan, he narrates all these math videos. Um, that's, he's the guy that's uh, 
that's he's got a really you know a really cool story uh, if you've if you have if you've never heard his his actual story you know it's pretty pretty fascinating uh you know just that he started creating these videos and putting them on youtube for his cousins as he's a he was a computer scientist and knew all the math and you know people started watching his videos on youtube and were like can you make more can you make more and uh you know one thing led to another led to another and you know they've got the this a uh, great uh nonprofit that basically creates math curriculum for for kids and for schools. I mean there are there are schools that are full blown Khan Academy schools now. But we'll we'll take a look later on how to start leveraging already created video for your own lessons. Okay? So yeah, there's there that's Khan Academy. And they also have an iPad app. Uh, let's see where is it under education so there's an iPad app you know so so if you're working with iPads you know it's the same same kind of deal right it, you know especially if you have YouTube but you know the the iPad app well it works works really well you know if you have actually putting your kids through a uh, a, a like work in Khan Academy you can see you know they've got you know a little uh, little little guys that you uh you know you can you can have a little avatar and your avatar can get bigger and better and better and all that stuff and you know you can move your kind of inner kind of interactive uh problems that you, you, kids can work through that assess their understanding of their uh what they've watched right That's pretty cool. I didn't know it did that. It's got handwriting recognition. Wow, they've really improved this app. Where's the blue dot? Negative three. That's pretty special. Okay, so I mean, there's 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 different ways that you can use it, but you know, all the all the videos are are embedded here in the Khan Academy app. Okay, so you know the the app works works pretty well as well. But you know, again, all these are accessible on YouTube. Okay, I'm um, just kind of looking at some other ones. I mean, there's there's other there's another uh, math uh, website with uh, math videos. Okay, he's got tons of test review. He's got you know algebra, number sense, pre-algebra. All kinds of good stuff, and so his his videos are all. I mean, you can look at he's got a huge video library. Which leads back to where YouTube. And also, integers <laughs> are the set of whole numbers that include zero, and their opposites, the opposite. Of Okay, now Nomia is a, is a pretty interesting uh, website. Uh, they also have an app, but that app does some different stuff. Uh, just kind of sharing some of Nomia's stuff. Uh, Nomia is pretty interesting in that they have tons of different types of lessons. Okay, um, in this, why don't we take a look at uh, an English language arts lesson and the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So symbols in Huck Finn. And the uh, the video looks like from 60 second recap, which is... Before he became a writer, Mark Twain was a riverboat pilot on the Grand Mississippi. But don't get so caught up in the details of Twain's setting that you fail to recognize this fact. In Huck Finn, the river isn't just... Okay, so more, you know, more stuff. And again, on YouTube. So what Nomi is kind of a, a, a clearinghouse, a collection of all kinds of different um, uh, video lessons. And you can see over here, art, engineering, English, math, science, social studies, technology, world languages. So there's 107 lessons with uh, encompassing 21 teachers for Arabic, 422 over 46 teachers for French, 234 over 52 teachers for Mandarin Chinese, and 
over 1,200 lessons for over 89 teachers for Spanish. Okay, I jump into English, American Lit, English as a Second Language, Grammar, SAT Reading, Literature, Writing Skills. Okay, let's jump into Grammar here. We can see there's a, these are the top topics in grammar. So parts of speech, nouns, independent clauses. So let's say I'm doing a lesson on verbs. So I'm going to try the verb tag right here. And I'll start looking. Okay, well, let's check out action verb theater. See what that's all about. Maybe. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our family theater. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. As a courtesy to those in attendance today, please turn off all cell phones, and thank you for not smoking. Welcome to the world of action verbs. Action verbs are words that describe what... Okay, some are better than others. <laughs> some are better than others. So, yeah, again, as a, as a teacher, you start now becoming a uh, consumer of of you know these these flippable lessons right and you know just like just like everything else you know the you get some are quality some are not these are all created by teachers so it's like you know you start uh you start developing a you know an idea of what in here is good and what in here isn't okay so know me is a great place to uh to just uh, root around and explore okay so we're um i know you're all familiar with ted talks um, but um, I don't know if you if you knew that that Ted has a site called Ted Ed. Okay, <laughs> Ted Ed is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna go there now. So right here at the link for a website for Ted Ed will take you there. And the web address is ed.ted.com. Now Ted, the 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 Ted Education site is uh, is pretty darn cool. There are a bunch of lessons on here. And what Ted has done is, well, let's see if I take the tour. Will it explain to us? Yes, it will. Let's check this out. Dear subscribers, there are over 250,000 of you now. A critical mass. At a critical time, we have the cumulative potential to impact global education. I've been assembled and given a voice for this video to describe one way to do just that. Please allow me 2.5 minutes to explain. My name is Ted Ed, and I am a symbol for both the Ted Ed website and the billions of videos available to you for free on the website known as YouTube. Today I invite you on a journey on which you will learn how to use ed.ted.com to create a lesson around the vast majority of videos on the web. When I say create a lesson, I mean that you may use the Ted Ed website to search for any video on YouTube. Once you find the perfect video, the one that really blows your hair back, helps you understand. All that makes you pause and say, my goodness, the universe is a fascinating place. You may use TED Air to enhance that video. You might use the Let's Begin section to set context for interpreting the video, or to define a learning objective for your students. Or, you might use the Think section to add multiple choice questions with time-coded video hints or open answer questions that beg for thought-provoking, written responses. Or, perhaps you'll use the Dig Deeper section to expand upon the video with articles, references or links to an application, or maybe even your blog. If any feature is not your cup of tea, just click Exclude. And this new feature, Discuss, it lets you create riveting discussions around your favorite bits. Learners, you can engage with lessons independently. The site will save your answers notes and ideas to your personal profile and track your learning over time. New lessons are added every day. Teachers, as you build or distribute customized lessons to individuals or to groups, you may use the site to track the progress of single students or your entire class. And no matter who you are, if you take the time to create a particularly stunning lesson, please also take the time to nominate it. 
We will systematically feature the best community-made lessons within the ever-growing TED-Ed library, free for the world to learn from, to customize and to share. The possibilities of this tool are as infinite as YouTube itself, and we will be adding new features regularly in the months and years to come. To join me and many others in building a library of lessons worth sharing, simply click on one of the features that interests you. Thank you for your time. All right, pretty cool. So um, this this actually TED Ed becomes a a uh, a framework basically for building a flipped lesson, and we'll we'll get into that a little more later. Um, one of the really cool things about uh, TED Ed, though, um, beyond all of the things that they describe there, is that um, they've got a lot of really uh, really interestingly animated. Video. So what one of the things that TED Ed has done is it's taken lessons from teachers, lessons that teachers have have um, have developed, and they've animated them. They've given them to like professional animators and had them actually animate the lessons. So just kind of looking at this one, this so it's uh, where does gold from come from? This is just the first one I'm looking at here. You can see right here the TED Ed Originals. Uh, original lessons feature the words and ideas of educators brought to life by professional animators. So if you're an educator and animator interested in creating one of these, you can nominate yourself to do it. So we've got here's David Lunny, he's the educator, and these these are the, the, the people that actually you know animated and designed the video. <laughs> Medieval times, alchemists tried to achieve the seemingly impossible. They wanted to transform lowly lead into gleaming gold. History portrays these people as aged eccentrics, but if only they'd known that their dreams were actually achievable. Indeed, today we can manufacture gold on Earth, thanks to modern inventions that those medieval alchemists missed by a few centuries. But to understand how this precious metal became embedded in our planet to start with, we have to gaze upwards at the stars. Gold is extraterrestrial. Instead of arising from the planet's rocky crust, it was actually cooked up in space. And is See, I, get, I, I started watching the video and get very interested. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, here's one on... Uh, Looks like it's on a Shel Silverstein poem, Where the Sidewalk Ends. Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. There is a place where the sidewalk So it looks like this is just this is just a video that's been um, animated using Lego. And this is a TEDx Select. So this is um, a little bit different, but one thing that that these lessons do is they um, if it's our, if, a, if it's a lesson that's already in here, they have in here already the uh, the questions right that go along with the video. So if it's the kind of thing that you go ahead and through the through the uh, the TED Ed framework, if you if you give it to as a as a lesson to your kids in here, right, then they it'll give them the questions to answer as they watch the video. And then this one looks like it has a dig deeper section as well. So the the really neat thing about this uh, this site is that not only that it has a lot of a lot of these lessons, I mean a lot of these videos in here, but it has these embedded lessons as well. And um, you know you can you can use utilize what's already been created, right? To help facilitate what you're doing. So you know, the Great Wall of China, four minutes and 30 seconds. One of the things that you'll notice as we look through these is that two minutes 57, four minutes 31, four minutes 50, three minutes 10, four minutes 10, 459, 703, that's the longest one we've seen, 423, 508, 444, 420. We're looking at videos that are like between three and five minutes. Okay, to watch a video that lasts 10 minutes it's it's a challenge. So I asked you 
just a little while ago to watch a video that was 14 minutes, you know, 14 minutes of a video. That was probably pretty long. Okay. Um, and, you know, we're, we're adults with hopefully longer attention spans than our students. But, you know, if you worked with kids, you know that their attention span isn't super long. And so one of the hallmarks of a, a, a well done flipped video, and I'm, I know that Keith Hughes mentioned that, is that, you know, it, it shouldn't be much more than five minutes at any one time. Okay? It just, it, that's, that, that's, you want to you be able to capture their attention. So this site itself is just, you know, in, incredibly deep and super well put together. I click on literature and language and it breaks it down to speaking, literature, linguistics, and writing. So if I go into linguistics, I get into sentences and where did the, where did English come from and how to use a semicolon and uh, what else do we how languages evolve? A brief history of plural of plural words. Okay, so you know you can see that there's a there's a variety um, when to use apostrophes. You know some some good stuff here, and again, three minutes and fourteen seconds. And I'm not sure is this one a. Yeah, it's an original, so it's it's animated. By a professional animator. Is it a flying comma? or a quotation mark chopped in half. Either way, you may already be well-versed in how to use the apostrophe, but here's a quick refresher on its usage. Okay, and again, we get here, there's four, tells us there's four multiple choice questions and um, three open questions. There's a guided discussion in here. Okay, so you can have a discussion. And one of the cool features of these TED uh, Ed lessons is that it's got this customize button so you can you can actually <clears throat> take this lesson into your um, into your own account and you can create questions around it okay it has those questions in there already right but you can you can add questions to it And you can kind of change up the uh, how the students interact with it in the TED Ed framework. So here it is, create your lesson, and you can take this. You can create the questions. These ones, these are already in here, but you can have up to 15. You can exclude questions. You can edit the questions. You can create your own question. All that stuff. So it's uh, it's a pretty pretty neat environment. Okay, and then there's YouTube, and YouTube is like the YouTube is like the Wild West, you know. I jump into YouTube, and you know, and I type in apostrophe. The first thing that comes up is is the full LP of Frank Zappa's apostrophe, <laughs> right? And look, yeah, we've the first, you know, out of the first five, three of them are Frank Zappa because he had a a, a, a album called apostrophe right but then I can see here there's some cartoons how to use apostrophe uh, there's a possessive song so there's a song there there's one by a grammar bites um, oh the electric company this show was big when I was a kid Okay, that's about enough of that business. Okay, so you can see that there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's literally, YouTube is a great place for you to use as a resource. A little more challenging for kids to use it, depend, especially if they're younger kids, right? So um, when, when we start looking through uh, YouTube, you know, YouTube, big YouTube, right? Just know that, I mean, there's, there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Charles the Grammar Dog our friend the apostrophe you know it's like there's all kinds of stuff out here okay but you know we we you know this this is kind of the area for us as teachers to find the stuff that we're going to use okay there are a couple of other um 
of other YouTube resources out there. And one of those is youtube.com slash education. This is kind of YouTube's education channel. And this is, this is kind of uh, where YouTube uh, actually now is, is uh, clearing out a lot of the garbage. And you can start looking at their playlists in YouTube EDU. Oh, wow. They don't have much in here. That's a little bummer. Primary and secondary education channel. Yeah, so we get geography, science. So they've actually, um, they've, uh, YouTube itself has actually got this EDU section where you can, you can it, it helps to uh, reduce the number of Frank Zappas and increase the number of actual tutorials that, that you might be looking for. Okay, so there are, I mean, literally, literally, you know, thousands and thousands of, of videos out there that you can utilize in a flipped lesson. Already created, you don't have to green screen, you don't have to step in front of a camera, you don't have to do anything to make that happen. Okay, um, what I'd like you to do is, um, is to, uh, in our community discussion this week, um, I've got a link to a blog post on EDU content creators, okay? And if you click on that link, it's going to take you to a list of um, YouTube channels of people that create content, educational content, okay, and on a variety of different subjects. And what I'd like you to do is, is do a little exploration um, through... Uh, some of these channels, you know, especially kind of focusing on maybe something that that interests you. Um, there's a Spanish channel, math channels, social studies channels. Okay, um, art. There's an art channel, and just kind of uh, just kind of play around with this for a little bit. Take a look at it. And um, what I would like you to do for this week's community discussion is just choose one of those YouTube channels that interests you or you think you might like to use with your own students and share one of their videos and comment on why you chose it and how you might use it. Okay, um, it's, oh man, that, that uh, technical thing put us a little late, but um, it's almost seven now. Uh, why don't we combine this with a dinner break and um, meet back together at, let's say, 7.45. Does 7.45 work for y'all? Yes. Okay, great. So we're going to say 7.45. Okay. So you want us to do that um, right now, the blog posting? Not the blog, but just the just the community in the Google in our Google Plus community. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, so you. that yeah, just just share a uh, a video that you find um, interesting and um, from from one of those YouTube channels and just just kind of you know reflect why did you choose it and is it something that you think you could use with kids that are either in a class you work in now or in a class you will work in in the future. Okay. All righty. All right. Okay, we'll see you back in about 50 minutes. Okay, so um, we had the opportunity to kind of look through, you know, real quick, but uh, hopefully you got a, a good taste of of you know some of those flipped lesson channels that are out there, um, with with more and more teachers uh, flipping their content, uh, you're going to see more and more and more of that of you know like just lessons out there on YouTube, um, just available for consumption. Um, so that leads us into the uh, idea of creating our own content, and just to uh, to prep us for that. 
Uh, there's a link here on, and you can just watch mine as well, but on the, on the, uh, the web page, there's a link here to um, how to create video lessons. I'm just going to go to it now, and you can follow along with me. So uh, this is by uh, this is a, a, a website, the Nomia website that we we looked at a little while ago, and they have a uh, a, a lot of resources on this page. And one of the resources is a, uh, a just a little snapshot on creating video lessons. And they basically cover three different methods of creating your own video lessons. The first is um, using iPad tools. Okay, and we're going to cover some of those this evening. Uh, the iPad is great for doing this because, um, you know, you can manipulate things with your fingers or if you're writing stuff, you can use a stylus. Um, it has its own built-in camera and its own microphone. Okay, so you can very easily, with, uh, with not much effort, um, you know, create a, just a, you know, quick and easy uh, lesson on your iPad. Okay, um, it goes through the advantages. You only need one piece of hardware. The results are consistent. Uh, simple integration with other iPad tools and you can um, you can integrate videos without switching devices or dealing with complex video import issues um, you know that's not so much of a big deal anymore the import issues I mean with YouTube if you can upload it to YouTube or you know you're you're pretty good to go sorry Jacqueline I'm on a, I'm gonna be there again I'm getting that feedback again um, uh, the challenge is, is, you know, it does require an iPad, which isn't a challenge for us because we all have them. Um, the handwriting on an iPad is often not as refined as with a stylus or a tablet. And, you know, you, you can get a stylus pretty cheap. And if you're, you know, if you're utilizing the iPad for, um, for uh, to, to make create lessons, you know, a stylus is a pretty cheap investment. Um, and... Uh, it, it has some uh, different tips here, okay, as far as, uh, you know, getting files back and forth, uh, recording video, that kind of stuff. So um, there's, there's um, um, some, different, some different options there. Um, they give you some different examples down here of, of iPad-created uh, videos using the Nomia Teach app, which is one of the apps that we'll look at. Uh, next is recording yourself with a camcorder. Um, just out of curiosity, without looking back at the the um, document that um, the the data from the chart you the the form you guys filled out early on, how many of you um, have already taken um, EDUC five fourteen, the digital video and education class? It's supposed to be the one before this class, but obviously most of you guys are taking the classes out of order. So um, yeah, so Diane took it. Um, the, the videoing yourself part of this, um, you know, we're not, I'm not gonna ask you to do that for, for um, what we're doing here. Uh, when you guys take 514, you will have some, uh, some practice videoing yourself and, and working, you know, working more with video. Um, I'm trying, you know, in this, in this class, the, the, the presumption is that you've already done some of that stuff and um, and you know I don't dive too deep into into digital video. Um, this is mostly you know how to utilize digital video. So you know there's always that the recording yourself with camcorder. You can use your iPad. You can use your iPhone, your Android phone. You know whatever works as a as a as a as a recorder. You know we have so many options now. Uh, you don't you don't need a full blown uh, you know video recorder. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, that you can grab that stuff. Uh, so, you know, there's ultimately, you know, when I teach 514, my, my culminating assignment, my signature assignment is basically connecting together um, a lot of different, is basically all three of these. It's using your iPad, using a camcorder, and last but not least, using screencasting tools. So it's really integrating, you know, all three of these things to create a, a, a comprehensive video lesson. But um, and then there's screencasting tools, and the one, the one screencasting tool that we're going to use in here is called Screencast-O-Matic, and I'll share it with you in a little bit. As as far as you know, creating a screencast is concerned, super easy to set up, super easy to use. You know, you can just 
do a tutorial and send it on its way. It's uh, it's real handy, real easy to use. So, so uh, this page basically details the three different, the three main ways of creating your own video. Two of which we're going to use this week: the screencasting option and the iPad option. Okay, so that's that's where we're heading now. Okay. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some iPad apps, and um, just just to give you um, there we're we're going to kind of uh, center ourselves in the the digital whiteboard arena, okay? Just to um, just so that we have a uh, the, this is kind of the easiest ways to create video. Um, I have for you on um, on the page here. I have four different apps. Um, and I have them moving from simplest to use to, um, well, let's not say simplest. Let's say uh, the fewest features to the most features. I don't know what happened to my video here. That's weird. Okay. And those four apps are Show Me. First one's called Show Me. The second one's called Edu Creations. Third one is called Nomi A Teach. And Nomi is the site that we visited a little earlier okay they have they have an iPad app called teach which is basically a digital whiteboard and then the one that's the most comprehensive and I and I, I highlighted a couple of these um, in the on the uh, the last week's uh, iPad app um, page um, this this one is uh, the, the most comprehensive one is called um, explain everything. Oh, that's weird. My video got bumped down here. <laughs> okay, so I have to do a little, a little reshuffling here on my webpage. Something got mixed up. So yeah, explain everything. And explain everything is is one that's super comprehensive. And um, the one, the thing that I like about explain everything is that um, it can be as basic as you want it to be, or as complex as you want it to be, and it has an extensive page of tutorials. So the guy that created explain everything is uh, has just this amazing support site where he covers the ins and outs of his app just I mean amazingly and you can really create some um, some very uh, you know complex and involved videos using um, using explain everything so just kind of looking at these, um, and we're gonna—I'm gonna take a look at a couple of them just to give you some um, some uh, tips and tricks for using it, and and how some of them will be um, easier to work with on the front end, but a little tougher on the back end. I'll explain that as we go along. So I'm gonna bring up my iPad so we can share a little. All right. So uh, here we are on the iPad, and I'm going to go ahead and open up Show Me. Okay. So Show Me is um, is basically it's it's a, it's basically at its at its heart a digital whiteboard. Okay. So you know, and this is not one that I use very often. So I, I've got a couple of um, Let's record. examples. And you can see my little timer on the bottom. Today, we're so, gonna... so this is just, this was a, a demonstration that I did in a prior class. So just, this is, this is a, the kind of video that you can make, you know, super quickly. I did this in, you know, just a couple of minutes on the fly. Talk a little bit. about prepositions and okay in order to show what prepositions how prepositions work I have uh, my dog Buster here so there's Buster and Buster is the subject 
Okay, and the, over here, I have Buster's house. And his house is the object. And basically what prepositions do is they describe the relationship that the subject has with the object. So in this case, we're going to talk about the relationship that Bus has with his doghouse. And when I say relationship, I don't mean he's dating his doghouse. I mean that Buster is going to do different things in and around his doghouse. Okay? Prepositions are the words that tell us where Buster is in relation to his doghouse. So Buster can be under his doghouse, over his doghouse, around his doghouse, inside his doghouse, outside his doghouse. All those words, inside or in, out, on, around, those are all prepositions. Okay, so big sloppy mess, but super quick and easy to create um, some sort of a lesson, some sort of a tutorial. This is a great tool if you if you just want to teach really quickly kids, you know, something that they're missing. So you know, this this one is is probably really fantastic for math. You know, but these are our basic tools in, in uh, Show Me. You have text, so you can tap anywhere and you can put in text. So let's say, uh, you wanna add some text. Okay. Uh, you can have your you have your little eraser that you can erase stuff with, and then you can also bring in images, okay, which is always cool. So let's say that uh, maybe I want to bring in, and I can do an image search right here. Let's say I want to bring in um, a uh, fraction number line. Let's see what happens if I type that in. Okay, I get a, yeah, cool, I get a series of little fraction number lines here. Um, I look at this one, if it looks like one that I want to use, um, I will go ahead and use that, uh, the fraction number line there. And then, you know, then I can, you know, basically just use my, uh, my pen here and I can change the the colors of my pen, sorry. Okay, we get all kinds of different pen colors, which is cool. And then um, whenever I'm ready to, um, to get to work, I hit the, the button right here in the middle. That's the record button, okay? And so when I hit that record button, yes, it lets me use the microphone. And um, so I'm currently recording. Um, I can I don't know why it's not giving me my pen here. Sorry. Let me start over here, sorry. Get in my fraction number line here again. OK, 
Okay, I can resize that there. Okay, so now what I can what I can do here is I can start, you know, recording a lesson. So if I hit my recorder, I see down here at the bottom that it is recording. Okay. And I can start talking about fractions. So, you know, on the number line, when uh you can create fractions here and get an idea if my uh, if my whole number here is one and I have zero over here then halfway between the two is a half and then we can break it down into thirds and we can break it down into fourths and we start understanding that when we have fractions right they are parts of a number and I can explain and describe and explain and describe and you know take students through the process of understanding that all of these fractions put together here you know that they that they you know when we put them together a half and a half I get one when I put together a third and a third and a third I get one when I put together you know a quarter and a quarter and a quarter and a quarter I get one and so you can really kind of you know outline a lesson and draw through it and when you're done with it you can save it if I hit my recorder I see down here at the bottom that it is. And I like it. I save it. I give it a name. Call it my fraction line. It's a little math. And the reason the reason that it's doing this right now is now it becomes part of the Show Me community. Okay, you can see here that it's posting the. Um, It's posting my show me to the uh, to their to their database. So you know, one minute long video, and look at my Gmail just tells me that the show me successfully posted, which is great. Okay, so here's here's the thing about show me. Um, there's there's a there's a couple of of things that we need to work with when we work with show me. Uh, first of all, there. Um, is, is working with the export feature of it. And so that that is a little weird. And it kind of, um, the same kind of issue, the same kind of deal that we had um, with um, with Adobe Voice, where it's kind of super, kind of challenging to get, you know, an embed code and all that business. Show me kind of works the same way as that. So, you know, if I have, if I have my, you know, my, thumbnail here in my in my library of show me's in my show me's right I've got it in my library here there's a little gear right here and when I click on that gear it gives me some options okay um, if uh, if I want to share it I can share it to Facebook Twitter or email which none of those really do me much good in in the grand scheme of things it gives me a download feature but when I click that it opens up a show me premium and I hate paying for stuff like premium accounts so I'm a little at a loss here on how I really deal with this show me and how I actually how I actually utilize it how I share my show me because the only again on here the only options they give me are Facebook, Twitter, and email, which is kind of a bummer. Um, what I'm going to choose is email, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to my email. Okay, it basically sends me right here the the link to my where my email lives on the internet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and send it to myself. Okay, and when I when I wind up getting this email, so this is this is going to help in a little bit, okay? I I got to figure out exactly how I can use this show me now. And it really this really applies for show me it applies for Know Me a Teach, and it applies for Edu Creations, because all three of those. What's that? 
Is it only available as an app? Um, well, I'm going to show you that in a sec. So I've got the email here from Show Me. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And it takes me, gives me a link. And so my, my Show Me has a, a home on the internet. It lives online. And as soon as it's done loading, we'll see that it lives online. If I hit my recorder. Okay, so, so here it is living online. And again, I got that email, Twitter, Facebook thing, none of which really do a whole lot for me. But then I also see up here in the upper right hand corner of my show me that there's the international sign for sharing, which is my little dot sharing with these other two dots. And when I click on that, it gives me a, a couple of other options, which is an embed code, which is cool. Like if we wanted to embed this video on its own in our blog or on a web page or whatever, we could do that. And it also gives me the link to the um, to uh, the to the to the actual uh, video itself, which is the same as as the link that 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 I got in my email, and then there it is, Facebook, Twitter, and email. So my problem is is that to create to to put it into a a, a flipped lesson, I don't want any of this stuff. I don't want to email it. I don't want to tweet it. I don't want to Facebook it. I don't want to embed it, and I don't want to go to the website. I want the video to be able to be put into a different app that I'll share with you in a little bit. And so here's, down here at the bottom that it and so here's the thing um, if I hit my there is an app and it's the app I'm using right now to record this session uh, you can't see it oh maybe you can can you see the little um, it looks like a candy cane going around my screen can you guys see that someone want to pop in and unmute themselves and tell me anybody okay so you can see it all right so yeah so that that is uh, the app I'm using now is called um, it's called screencast-o-matic okay and screencast-o-matic allows you to take um, to, to do screencasts okay and it's something that we're gonna cover in a little bit but the the, the best way to get because what I really want is I want this video on YouTube and I know this is like a lot of steps and it's really frustrating. And for that reason, um, I always, I really point people to explain everything. Even though it's $3, it's worth the $3 for me to not have to hassle with, with um, trying to get my other videos onto YouTube. So basically what I would do with a video like this is I would open a, I would go into um, a Screencast-O-Matic. This box, this candy cane box, I made it this size, but I can also make it exactly this size, the size of my video. So I would make my box exactly the size of this video, and then I would play my recorder, video. I see down here at the bottom as I as I record it as a screencast. It's kind of weird and kind of sucky, but that's the best way to get this into YouTube. And we really want our videos into YouTube because when they're in YouTube, we can do anything with them. When it's in showme.com, I can't really do anything with it. And you'll you'll um, you'll get a little more of that as as we move forward. So before before we leave Show Me, um, I want to share with you also uh, the Show Me library. And this is kind of like for me the gold of of like Show Me and Edu Creations is that they've got a community of people that are using this app and when I created my app when I created my, my show me video it had me tag my video as you know what it's about math or whatever and what show me does is they use those tags 
to place their the videos that people create into these different categories, the community categories. So when I look into math here, I can see that there's all kinds of different show me's that people have created. Oh wow, there's a friend of mine. A friend of mine, JR. Okay, so let's see what let's see what JR put into show me. Maybe. Um, while it's loading, I'll, I'll just jab on some more. Um, so you can really find a variety of, of videos created by teachers for students in the Show Me library. How to divide, place value, circumferences, and area of circles. And so, you know, we start seeing that there's, that this becomes, this is now, a, you know, really a community. Hi, welcome back to Ken with Go. Tonight, I'm going to show you guys another puzzle that I normally give my kids at the end of the class period. Okay, and if this is a video that I like, then what I would do is just use my Screencast-O-Matic, draw my, draw my box right around the video, record it with my screencasting software, and then upload it to YouTube from there, and then use it. That may not make a ton of sense now, but it will when we, it will in a little bit. So stick with me. Okay, um, Edu Creations is very similar to Show Me. Okay, it has a few more features than um, than Show Me does, and we'll take a look at. Oh, I think it's outside of there. At Edu Creations. And if I were to create a new edu creation, you can see it has a little different interface. Um, allows me to do some duplication. It allows me to choose the type of paper that I want. That's kind of a neat little feature, although you could always bring in a, um, an image of graph paper in the other one. So it's kind of the same idea, it looks a little different, but also if, um, if I jump into Edu Creations, they have the same thing as, as uh, Show Me does in that they have a full community of people that are creating their stuff. But this one has really become more of like a, a you know, we want you to pay for it. So, you know what? We're going to scrap Edu Creations. Don't use edu creations. Uh, Nomia Teach is the next one that um, that I want to share. Uh, da, da, da. Do I have to log in every time? I guess I do. It's not F mail, is it? It's a Gmail, buddy. Just a a little uh, piece of advice for you guys when you're <laughs> whenever you're um, broadcasting something on your iPod and you have to sign in on your iPad. One of the things up on on an iPad or your phone is the letters of your password show up for a little for a second before they turn into a dot and so yeah it's a little people will see your passwords and all that um so when you're looking at a um at a uh, no at nomia teach now you can see that down here in this section the different tools they have uh this one allows you to move things around uh, this one allows you to draw. This one is a bunch of different shapes. The next one is images, text, um, different colors. This is a cool feature. This is a laser pointer. So you can laser point around if you have an image on there if you're talking about something. 
So like my students made this bookcase and I might want to show, you know, like, you know, this board right here is really cool. Um, I like the features of that. On this board, they used a whitewash. So I can, you know, can talk about uh, different things that I bring in. Um, and as you can see, that one of the features of this one is as kind of a, a, a PowerPoint or Prezi look to it. You can create slides that you go through. And you can also um, bring in your face too. So if you wanted to use your um, your iPad camera and have your face in there as you teach, which is a little, you know, it's a little weird, but you have kind of have to hold your iPad out, but that's that's available on there as well. So that's a this is this one is one that I don't really use, but it's you can see it has more features to it. And again, it's part of that Nomia community. Now, the one that I use when it, whenever I use software, I mean, uh, apps like this is Explain Everything. And again, Explain Everything is a $3 app. Um, and I don't have all of my stuff in here because I had to buy a new iPad. My iPad was finally too old. So I, I have to figure out a way to port all of my old Explain Everythings into my new iPad app. I'm not really sure if I can do that or not, but in any case, um, Explain Everything is um, is just, it's it's got a, a lot more features to it um, than any of the other ones. It is, um, and like I said, it has that extensive, uh, that page of the expensive, extensive, not expensive, page of tutorials. Like the guy that, the guy who created this app is really very um, fastidious about any changes he makes. He he, I follow, you know, I follow him on Twitter. He tweets out whenever he makes a change in the app. He's like really committed to, um, to, to this app being a, a really good product and supporting it. And the, the great thing about it is $3 is all you ever pay for it. You're not, you're not looking to get a, um, a nickel out of you, which is, which is really cool. Okay. So, um, in explain everything we've got our, you know, it, it defaults to the pen app. So, I can, you know, draw whatever I need to on there. Um, it's got a shapes app, and to access them, you just kind of give it a little long press. If I want a an arrow, I can, you know, grab it and make an arrow. If um, I need to uh, add, uh, and and so this is where it starts getting really cool, right? I can insert an object and look at the look at the amount of objects that I can insert. Not only a photo, but a video or a file. So if I had a PDF or a Word document or something that I wanted to bring in to a slide in my and explain everything, I could do that. So I could bring a YouTube video into it. If I wanted to bring a sound in, like a, you know, a, a wave sound or an MP3. Math equations, that's one that I've never used, but you could bring in an equation. You could bring a, a, one of your photos, one of your videos, and you could bring in a web browser window. So that's, to me, that's just like super awesome that if I can just type in, um, let's just make it easy. So I can actually access a web, a web page in here and it's it's a full functioning web page so I can you know I can start talking about okay so today in Google let me record and access my microphone yes so today in Google uh, some pretty interesting uh, things on the Google page here uh, if you look right here meet Sambru elephants in maps that's pretty wild let's see let's check that out So what does this take? Looks like it takes us. Sorry, I don't know why my iPad's freaking out on you guys. Wow. Okay, so it takes us with it takes us to Google Maps, and it actually shows us some elephants in Google Street View, which I don't know. I guess we could consider right here a street. I don't know. Maybe that's where they were driving when they got the image. But look at this. We got one elephant here. We got another elephant over here. And I don't know if you can see it, 
all that well. But we got another one right down there. That's pretty cool. Looking around now to see if there's any more. There doesn't appear to be. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Okay, and now I, what I'm doing is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to uh, click the export button. Okay, so I just created a little minute 15 video. Um, this works like uh, like any other, um, like, but it has slides, so I can add slides, right, and jump to them. So I can have as many slides as I want, and I can move from slide to slide. as So I can kind of create my slides in advance, or I can do them on the fly, and I can add slides as I like. So I can kind of set it up beforehand, and then take kids through the lesson. If, if, if I want to make like a really complete and thorough lesson, um, you know, if I wanted to make a five minute lesson video, I could do that in here by bringing in images, things like that. Or, you know, I can just explain something on the fly. But then by, um, by hitting this export button here, look at all the options I'm given. Okay, I'm given so many options, it's insane. And that's one of the huge, that's one of the terrific features about this tool is I can send it to my photos um, to my, my, this is just, you know, on, send it to my iPad. I can send it to an iMessage. I can send it as a message to somebody, someone else that has an, an iDevice, an iPhone or whatever. I can send this video in, in their text messages. I can put, send it to Dropbox. And this is for me right here. This is it. Sending it to YouTube. That's the key. I can send it to Evernote. If I use Evernote, I could send it to Vimeo, which is another video hosting service. So in schools that don't get YouTube, a lot of them do get Vimeo, and I can send it there. Okay, so I've got some great options. So I'm going to go ahead and select YouTube. I'm going to make it a public video, which is cool, and I'm going to go ahead and export it. Okay, and it's a pretty quick export. Okay, but what it, you know, what the, it's, it's cool because I can just get a very quick export to YouTube. And once it's in YouTube, done deal. I can I can utilize it in a in a, in a in a variety of different ways. Okay, and this this um, app just makes it super easy. So for me, you know, I trust me, I'm a guy that likes everything free, lots of stuff free, you know, but um, I I don't mind paying three bucks for something that's a, a really quality instrument. And this this app really is. So I'm just going to let this finish up its uh, its little journey here to uh, compressing, and now uh, it's going to upload it. So while that's uploading, we can jump back to the page. So that's our series of um, of apps that allow you to create your own content on your iPad. Okay, there are other ones out there. There's one called Doceri. There's another one called Screen Chomp. Um, you know, so there's there's a variety of tools out there. And, you know, some, you know, to varying degrees, uh, some are better than others. Some have different features than others. Some are simpler to use than others. But, you know, really at the end of the day, I, I look for the tool that gives me the opportunity to utilize my video the best. And for me, that's explain everything. And it looks like we have uploading success, which is great. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we're going to come back and use that video in a little bit um, when we're looking at some other some other apps. For now, though, let's uh, move down to the next section, which involves web-based screencasting. Wow, I don't know how my videos got so mixed up because that is supposed to be up here. I'll fix that right when we're, when, right when we're done. Today, I'm going to show you a short tutorial on no you're not okay so um uh i used to offer a couple different options for web-based screencasting but that should now say option because there's only one that i want you to use it's called screencast-o-matic there were a, there were a couple different screencasting apps out there that were that were pretty even but um screencast-o-matic has really uh risen to the top the cream has risen to the top 
So um, Screencast-O-Matic is the screencasting tool of choice now. All right, let me shut down some of these tabs. Okay, um, just to gauge really quickly, um, how many of you have used a screencasting app before? Okay, so this is a new skill. Um, super, super easy skill to uh, to to um, start and to uh, master pretty quickly. Um, it, the the basics behind screencasting are that you just basically have to do what I'm doing now. You have to explain something to somebody on your computer screen while you're while you're doing it. So, you know, at times, you know, you, you stumble over your words and, you know, if you're doing something really succinct and, you know, really, really, you know, you want it to be nice and tight and short, um, you know, you might go through it a couple of times. If it's something like this where I'm talking to you guys for like a few hours, you know, I'm, I'm just going to talk like I'm, like, like I'm talking to you like we're friends and I'm just showing you stuff because I, I can't be on, 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 you know, on my, on, you know, at my professional best you know, for the whole, the whole time we're here. So, you know, we're, we're talking like we would talk in a classroom. Um, just to head over to their website. I know it's funny, funny word, but it's screencastomatic.com. Okay. And this is their page. Um, if, and I, I'm using it right now. So I can't really show you specifically what it looks like to use it because I am using it. So, um, but basically if you have a PC, so there's a couple different things here. If you're using a PC, you can just click start recording and you will get a little box on your screen that you can resize and you can send to whatever size you want and hit record and it'll just work. It'll record whatever it is that you are um, presenting. So, you know, I start recording, it puts a little red uh, recording button down here. It gives me a couple options. And then I just go to the page that I'm going to be teaching from or the app if I'm going to, you know, teach something, you know, about, you know, let's, let's say I'm going to, you know, teach you how to use, do something in, in Photoshop. You know, I would just open up Photoshop. And I would, you know, I would, I would start. So I would just click the record button and I would begin. First you go to file and you click new. Okay, you're creating a new, uh, a new document here, a new file. So you're gonna go ahead and give it a name. And you wanna make sure that for this project that your width is 5.5 inches and your height is 5.5 inches. You want it to be a perfect square. And your resolution, since it's going to be web-based, only needs to be 72, which is cool. And then you click OK. And it's going to generate this new, you know, so, so that's, that's basically how you do a screencast. You know, you take, you're teaching someone a skill or showing them how to do something, and you're recording it. And you're recording your voice. So on a PC, as I mentioned, all you have to do is hit Start Recording. Um, Screencast-O-Matic, and this is, well, let's get all technical now. Screencast-O-Matic uses a, a computer program called Java to work. And for whatever reason, Mac laptops, Mac, you know, Macintosh computers, Apple computers, they don't get along well with Java. It's a pain in the butt. It's frustrating. Because if ever I want to use a Java-based um, app, it's like you got to go through so much to make it work from the web. So Screencast-O-Matic has developed a downloadable version of itself. Okay, so if you're using a Mac, you would just click this download and install button or link. And it'll download a, a version 
of Screencast-O-Matic. You just have to go to the download.com and then you just drag it into your applications file. And then it just becomes in your apps, a, another app, it's right there, Screencast-O-Matic, okay? And it's super, again, super easy to use. You just open up the app and it's right there. And there's, you know, if you go to YouTube, I'm sure there's tutorials on how to use Screencast-O-Matic. Yep, Screencast-O-Matic tutorial. There it is. So, you know, how to use Screencast-O-Matic. So, you know, again, super easy to use. And, and so this is, this is the app you're going to use to record a screencast. All right, and you know, and I also add a little section here on editing tools. iMovie for the iPad, iMovie for the um, for your laptop, but you're really not going to need either of those for what we're doing here. Okay, so basically, and I'm going to scroll down real quick to our, our our project for the week. It's our flip class project. Part one of this is that you're going to be you're going to be creating two videos. Okay. The first video is going to be a computer-based screencast, and then you're going to use Screencast-O-Matic to create this screencast. Okay, um, and what you're going to be doing is creating a short three to five minute technical tutorial. In this cast, you will be demonstrating the use of some computer-based skill, like formatting a header in Google Docs, or resizing an image in Prezi, or accessing your documents in Google Drive. Okay, it, it, it doesn't have to be something that you feel like you need to teach me, but think of your students. Like what kind of what kind of computer-based skill would would it would it be um, beneficial to your students if you could create it for them to teach them a skill that you're gonna need them to use in class. Okay, so just you know create the video as if you are um, you're doing it for your students. And so here's just a quick example of what that might look like. Okay, uh, we're going to go over the process of creating a Google form as a response for your faith integration project and then uh, putting it as, as an embedded resource into your blog. This is what we went over last week in class pretty much step by step, but there were a few of you that missed so I wanted to throw this screencast in real quick for you. Uh, once you're in Google Drive, it's in drive.google.com, you're going to hit create and you're going to choose form. Okay, we're not going to watch that whole thing, but you get the you get the gist. So some sort of a step-by-step -step process through a computer-based uh, tutorial. Okay, so that's one of your videos. The second video is going to be your iPad-based screencast. And what I want you going to want you to do is to use one of the iPad apps that, that we covered to create a short, again, three to five minute teaching video for your students or potential students, teaching them or reinforcing for them something you have or will be studying in class. So this is more about, this is a tutorial about some form of content, like the parts of a flower or the Pythagorean theorem, the fall of Rome, rhyming words, whatever, whatever your, whatever content you want to tackle. Okay, and so just a quick, and I did this in the middle of a, um, a middle of one of the classes. Okay, we're going to review a little bit of our work on the flipped class. Uh, this is from the infographic that we looked at earlier. And just to kind of, as a matter of review, we take a look at the traditional classroom where the teacher stands up in the front of class and all of these kiddos here, they learn all the wisdom that he has to offer. Okay, so that's that's the idea there. So you can bring in images or whatever whatever it is you want to bring in to to basically teach or reinforce or review or do a problem or whatever it is that, that you want to do. If you want to do like a con kind of video where he goes through a mathematical problem, whatever it is. I just you know, just some practice using the tool. Just remember that you're gonna have to get this video to YouTube. Okay, because we're gonna need we need to get it to YouTube in order to go to, to go to the next level with it. Okay, so if, um, if you use something like um, Show Me, then you're gonna need to 
access that show me video on the internet and then use Screencast-O-Matic to take a screencast video of it and then upload it to YouTube, which is good times. I mean, it's just more steps in the process. Or if you spend the three bucks to get um, explain everything, you can just very quickly and easily upload it to YouTube right away. Okay, so you're going to be creating two videos this week as part of this project. One that's a computer-based screencast uh, about a, a you know reflecting and showing uh, your students how to do some sort of a technical skill on the computer, and a, an iPad-based screencast that at uh, reviews or teaches uh, some academic content. Okay, so that's part one. Now I'm gonna scroll back up to talk about flipping apps. Okay, there's two different flipping apps. Wow, I don't know why my videos got so screwed up. That's so weird. Um, I will definitely make sure that these things are in their proper places. Oh, now it's fixed. Okay, cool. Yep, all right. That was just a weird thing on my part. Okay, so um, the first one is called TAC. T-A-C-K-K. -K. Okay, and TAC, both of these apps that we're gonna, I'm going to be talking to you about have both web versions and iPad versions. On both of them, the web versions are better. And actually, for TAC, you're going to need to use the web version and not the iPad version. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and go into TAC here. And TAC is a cool little tool, super easy to use, like super easy to use. And what TAC allows you to do is to create and we have the universal symbol for create in TAC, which is right up here, the green button with the pencil on it. And it's asking me what kind of TAC do I want to create? Do I want to start blank? Uh, do, do I want it to be an about me TAC, an Instagram TAC, a blog TAC, school project, a chat? I always like starting with the blank canvas because it allows me to choose what I want to do and what I want to use. Okay? So here's TAC. Here's the TAC workspace. And it's pretty pretty easy to get a handle on, especially the way that we're going to use it. Um, we're going to use it to um, create a, a little bit of a flipped lesson, okay? And so what we're going to do is we are going to add a video to this and a title and a couple other things. So it kind of has um, down here a little bit of a Weebly feel to it for me because it allows me to choose the different building blocks of my tack. So the first one I'm going to use is a headline, and my headline is going to be um, elephants in Google Maps, because that's the that's the lesson that I just um, that I just outlined in in what do you call it in hello in explain everything. So, and I want to center that. That looks good. I can change my my graphics around. I can change my colors around. All right, that looks good. And now I'm going to add my video. <clears throat> I have to get my video first. So, my video is going to be on my channel. I'm sure it uploaded by now. Yes, there it is. It's called Made with Explain Everything. I didn't give it a real name. So let's go ahead and make sure that that video. Is on the phone, yes. So Tinder. Wow, OK, so it takes us with, it, I guess we could consider right here. Well, that's weird the way that formatted. Do I ever get my elephants in here? Oh well, not going to worry about it. We just used it as an example. Uh, so I just I just need to grab my video. So this is the video that I made with Explain Everything, and I just need to grab the the URL, the web address. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to come back into TAC, and I'm going to add video. 
Okay, and it supports, you know, different kinds of video. So I guess apparently there's 300 supported services, but again, YouTube is just easy. It's, it, it works. I don't have any issues with it. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there and hit enter. And now I have my video in here. Okay. Now the one thing that TAC automatically puts in every one of its, what they call TACs, is a comment stream where people who log in here can leave comments. Okay, and so I want to go ahead and add some text that basically tells my students, as you watch the above video, write in the comments section below three different things you would look for in Google Maps. Okay, and I can play with my text a little here and center it up. There we go, choose a little different font. Okay, so now I've got my title, I've got my video that I've created, and then I, I have the instructions here. It's like I want them to write in the comments section below three different things they look for in Google Maps. And the one thing I would do when I, if, if I have students going in here and doing this is I would not allow anonymous posts. So I check that box and not allow anonymous posts. So now as students are watching it, you know, I would look for the pyramids. I would look for, you know, uh, the Eiffel Tower. So they can start putting in, you know, their comments as they're watching this. And it's like, you know, so here's the deal. When I create these flipped videos, how do I know that kids are watching them? Okay, I need some sort of, of a, of, you know, of just a quick formative assessment so that I know that kids are actually watching these videos. And so using something like TAC to have students interact, and this, this is obviously, you know, they can answer this question without watching the video. Three things I would look for in Google Maps, I could just list stuff, right? Um, but you know, if, you're, if you actually have some academic content in here, you can have them, you know, replying with, you know, other meaningful answers. Now, if you're just looking for the right answer, you know what I mean? Like if you're doing a math problem and want to know the answer, this, this might not be the environment for that because, you know, one kid writes it, two kids write it, and then all the other kids just copy it. But if you're looking for them to, to have a discussion about something, this is a great tool to use. Okay? Or, you know, name, name the most important thing that you learned from this video. Something like that. That actually allows them to, uh, you know, give like a free and open response. Okay, TAC is a great tool for that. Okay, so what I'm going to want you to do for your project is one of these two videos, either your computer-based screencast or your iPad-based screencast, I'm going to want you to um, use TAC, okay, use TAC to um, make that a flip lesson. So in this, this is a, a computer-based tutorial that I created using Autocrat with Google Forms. Um, you know, nothing but the very nerdiest would be interested in it. But my video is embedded here. Okay, so in the raw, so we're in the raw spreadsheet here, and we're going to go up to add-ons. Okay, and um, using the comment stream below, offer your observations on anything you find interesting, and offer a way that you can see yourself using Autocrat with students or staff. And so it, it's basically, you know, it allows, you know, for the embedding of this TAC, but, you know, so here's an example of a, a way that I would use TAC with a you know, computer-based technical tutorial, okay? Anything you find interesting in a way that you can see yourself using it.
Okay, so that's um, that's the first flipping app. The second flipping app is one that I showed you um, earlier when I, uh, I think the second week, and that's Edpuzzle. Okay, Edpuzzle allows you to take any video, okay, from the you know from the internet, self-created, and edit it down to the portions that you want. Add some audio notes and questions for students. Create virtual. You can also create virtual classrooms where you can monitor their work, which is pretty cool. But in Edpuzzle, okay, you we can create you know a lesson. So I can go ahead and create a lesson using um well let's just pretend that i think i already i think i already kind of went through this with you guys but i'll do it again real quick um if i create a new video okay i can bring it in from you know one of a, a bunch of different places but i you know obviously i would want it maybe to be something from my own uh, YouTube channel, but by clicking on these different channels, okay, I would be able to search and find stuff here. So let's say that I wanted to find uh, what we're we doing later. Apostrophe. I would do a search here, and it would give me a lot of Frank Zappa stuff, and then other uh, stuff as well. And I could use so in this way, you can see how really you know quickly and easily you could grab some already created video and utilize it for this uh, for this. Uh, project this week I want you to use your own so you would have to go back to your own YouTube channel and find something that you that you uploaded there so let's say that I you know here I'm gonna take this uh, this dopey uh, video that I made for last week's lesson the sock puppets one I don't even remember what it was about I think it was a hey Johnny have you ever heard of Adobe Voice? Okay, so I made a, a stupid sock puppets video about Adobe Voice. That's my voice. It's actually, I listen to it now. That's not too, that's not too bad. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the URL up here again and copy it. I'm going to bring it over to Edpuzzle. I'm not sure what happens when I go to my content. Let's see. No. Okay. okay. And I just put in the URL and it will drop. Hey, Johnny. Have you ever heard of Adobe Voice? Okay. Oh, man, I haven't heard of Adobe Voice. Okay, so I have my, my little video here. Okay, and I don't want to crop the video. Crop, you see, you can, if you find a long video, you know, like a nine minute video, and you just want to use a portion of it, you can crop it down from the front or the back. Since this is only a minute, I don't need to crop it. And you're, you're not going to need to do that either, but it does have that tool. Okay, I could create my own audio track. So at any portion of this video, I could, like, if I, if it, like, let's say it's a tutorial of something, and I wanted to record my voice over it. I could do that. You can't see the video. Uh, your screen froze. Is my is my screen frozen right now? Yes. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try something weird here real quick. I'm going to be gone for just a sec. How am I doing now? Is it better? Is my head yes, moving? Yes, we just see you now, though. Okay, yeah, but but uh, is my head moving? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
A little bit. A little bit. Juxtaposed. Okay. Are, are, are we back now? Can you see me? Can you see my screen? No, now we just see you and you're frozen. Hmm. That's got to be lovely. Okay. Now it's just um, your teaching, you know, it's your static picture. That's what we see now. All righty. All right, any better? <laughs> Not good. Okay. Um, Give me uh, less than a minute, and I'm going to try and uh, shut down Chrome and come back. So I'll, I'll be back. It looks like we can see your house. Okay, how's how's this? How's this? Any better? We see you again. And is my head moving and not freezing? Uh, no, it's it moved and then it froze. <laughs> oh gosh, this is ridiculous. No, now it's moving. Okay. Yeah, it's just. So let's. Go back to Ed Puzzle. See if hopefully we can maintain a little decorum here. I don't have much more for you, so hopefully. Well, I think my internet might have just fallen off the face of the earth.
Ugh. All right, if you can hear me, good night. And um, again, any questions you have, please don't hesitate to contact me.